November 2014. Two women ages 19 and 21 were sitting in their new car at around 11 p.m. They were using deodorant spray and smoking. What happened next was all over the newspapers the following day. Car explodes, total write-off. The women survive with first and second degree burns. This explosion in Germany is said to have been triggered by deodorant spray and a cigarette. But is that possible? We want to make our own impression of the accident vehicle and go to Kruger Recovery Service. Jörg Kruger was at the scene himself only a short time after the explosion. Yes, this is a standard Opel Corsa, almost new, just three weeks old at the time of the accident. As you can see, the interior door panelling has been torn apart by the force of the explosion. The trunk lid was like this. That's exactly how we found it. We regularly pick up lots of accident vehicles that are also very seriously damaged and deformed, but we haven't had anything like this before. Terrible destruction. The bodywork completely disfigured. All the more amazing that the occupants survived the accident with only minor burns but no permanent injuries. I wouldn't want to have been in that vehicle, no question about it. And the fact that the injuries turned out the way they did is really lucky. The Guardian Angel did a great job here, a great job. In the meantime, the accident victims have been discharged from hospital. In the footwell of the car, we can still find the lighter and the empty deodorant can. Was this combination the reason for the explosion? What fatal chain of coincidences led to this accident? To find out, we go to a fire protection company and talk to Jens Hilpke. We'd like him to show us what explosion risks are posed by deodorant cans. Deodorant cans contain highly flammable propellants such as propane or butane. The propellant gases cause the actual deodorant to be sprayed out of the can. We have a fire safety trainer here where we can burst a pressure vessel, a deodorant bottle, under safe conditions. We just put the deodorant can in the container and close the container again. These are safe conditions. This has been built specifically to burst deodorant bottles like this. Jens Hilp shows us what happens if you don't heat the warnings on the can. From a safe distance, he heats the deodorant can with a gas flame. Important, do not try this yourselves. The flame causes the gases inside the can to heat up and expand, causing an explosion. The can cannot withstand the ever-increasing pressure. At a temperature between 80 to 90 degrees, it's blown apart and the highly flammable propane and butane gases turn into a fireball. You see? The can has completely burst apart, exploded. And as you saw, the fireball is also very extensive, and this can also cause a lot of injuries. Once again, this proves that there's a very great danger from these deodorant cans after all. What surprises us? In the destroyed accident vehicle, the deodorant can in the footwell did not explode. It is intact, but empty. So, what happened in the car? Was just one cigarette enough to spark off the explosive devastation? We drive on to an old barracks site. Here, Blaster Wolfgang Stabe is going to help us. He knows that propellants in a certain combination are particularly dangerous. When I see the explosion pictures, my assumption is that there was something present in a certain ratio. That's to say, if the highly flammable substances were mixed in the right ratio with air, that's when we get into an area where a spark can have such an effect. And that's how the vehicle may have been destroyed. Staber wants to test his assumption on this car. Is the gas from a Dio can mixed in a particular ratio with air really enough to cause the violent explosion in the accident? Using a remote control ignition source, Stabe simulates a burning cigarette in the car. 
Then, Stab allows the gases from the deodorant can to flow into the interior. In the process, the gases mix with the air. The closed door and windows do not allow the gas mixture to escape. Three, two, one. And indeed, the gas-air mixture catches fire and goes up in a puff of smoke. But there is no powerful explosion like the one in the accident vehicle. Only the floor mat catches fire. Here you can see very clearly, one can already has an effect. It caused a fire, you can see it here on the passenger side. The mat's burning away cheerfully, there was definitely fire, but one can isn't enough, there must have been more cans involved. Back at the accident vehicle, we take another closer look. Besides the one can in the footwell, we discover more spray cans in the truck. A total of eight. Police press officer Frank Meisker from the investigating authority knows how full the cans are. As far as I know, eight empty cans were found in this vehicle. Why they were lying there empty is not yet known. So, is it possible that the gas from eight deodorant cans in the car mixed with air to form an explosive mixture? Wolfgang Stabe wants to try it out again using this small car. He has built a special device for the purpose. It will enable him to trigger all the cans at the same time. This experiment is very dangerous and can only be performed by specialists. Please don't do this at home. Again, an ignition source simulates the cigarette. Then, Stabe lets the flammable propane and butane gas from eight cans flow into the interior. Three, two, one, and... The gas-air mixture reacts with a violent explosion. However, is this experimental explosion comparable to the destruction caused to the car in the accident? Could the accident have happened like this? The analysis. Here, of course, you can see how great the force was. The gas pressure was so great that the side window was blown out here. It landed over there, easily seven to eight meters. It's down there somewhere. Here's the side window. You can see the force behind it. Extremely destructive. The eight deodorant cans together have enormous explosive power. Still, our blast result is nowhere near as devastating as what happened to the accident vehicle. Here, the damage is even worse. So why these differences with the same amount of propellant? Accident expert Kruger has the answer. A very new vehicle, new door seals, new windshield seals. When the doors and windows are closed, this car is airtight, it's gas tight. No gas can escape to the outside like in an older vehicle with poorer seals. The gas remains in the vehicle and can therefore also ignite. The question remains, how did the gas from eight cans get into the car and thus put the occupants' lives in danger? The speculation is that the accident victims wanted to intoxicate themselves with deodorant spray. Young people are increasingly turning to deodorant cans to get a cheap high, often with fatal consequences. The young women are still being questioned about the incident and we hope that it will then become clear why there were so many deodorant cans in the vehicle. Regardless of the outcome of the investigation, in this incredible story, these young women were incredibly lucky. <laughs>